can't even begin to tell you, Trouble in Shangri-La is the new CD, and I absolutely love it. Thank you, Rose. It's just so great. It is. And Fall from Grace, I was just saying, is my favorite cut on the record. And it almost didn't make the record, so... Yeah, people. It was. People, uh, I was. Yeah. You ahead. have to like. You have to sort of fight with with yourself. You or? have to find the right person to yeah. do each song because um, I, I just was telling you that my little friend Cheryl Crow, she could not figure out what to do with Fall from Grace. Right. And she just said, I can't figure it out. So we have to find somebody who can, you know. And luckily for me, John Shanks said, I can do it. I, I get it because it was this close to not being on the record. Well, I'm glad it is so, my favorite cup. But the whole CD is amazing. Thank how did the Cheryl Crow collaboration get to, how did that come about? Well, it, I met her uh, a long time ago. Remember the movie Boys on the Side? Yes. I met her at the premiere kind of party for that at the House of Blues because uh, I did one of her songs on that record. And at that point, I think we probably said a little something about working together. I didn't see her again for about a year. And that time, I asked her, would you like, I asked her to produce the whole record. Right. And so she kind of produced as much of it as she could. And then she had to go and do her own thing. And then she came back and helped me with a little more of it. And really has been my saving grace. I mean, she's like my angel. And I she, thought, you know, oh my God, what am I going to do? I know she has told me that it was totally overwhelming to her that you, you know, wanted to work with her. I mean, I can't imagine Cheryl Crow, who obviously grew up listening to Fleetwood Mac, right, and you right. doing well, your solo record. We're all so insecure, you know. Yeah. We're all so insecure. Right. This, the DVD that I have from the Fleetwood Mac reunion tour, I have to say I've almost worn it out because it's, uh, it's amazing. You and all the stereo stores in the world. I mean, in, in every mall, that's how they sell their equipment. They play that. Right. So I'm going, that's pretty darn good. Well, the Silver Springs, you and Lindsay Silver Springs, and you looking over at him, and then at the end, and then me with the crying and the whole, oh, come on, it was like killer. It was that way, too. It was, you know, it was, that was like a magical night, that night that we filmed that show. Yeah. That was a magical night. We filmed Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and we didn't get it until Friday. And yeah. it was like, we only have one more night, so we have to get it tonight. So we all went on stage with a real mission to really be great. As we walked up there, it was like, there's no, no more excuse now. The fact that we haven't played since 1983 does not matter now. Right. We have to be so good that well, we just Well, you delivered out. and above. I don't know if you can get it because, you know, it took me a long time to get it. I had to order it and order it because it sells out. Of the stores right. right away but you should get that if you can we don't have it to give away but the DVD it's just it really is amazing thank you is it true that you had writer's block for a long time it wasn't for a long time it was for just maybe about a year and you know it really wasn't writer's block it was just I was just you know I was just a little bit depressed about my life sure and when you're kind of depressed it's not so much when you write you can be in the middle of a tragedy and you can write right or you know something like you know dramatic but when something just is, you're just bummed out, yes. that's when you don't really write. Yeah. So that's all it really was. It's and kind of like a malaise, because yeah. I have that it's, myself. It's just, a, yeah. it's just a thing where you just don't really feel like, you really don't feel like listening to music Yeah. at all. And it was Tom Petty so, that sort and of it was helped Tom, you? My friend Tom, who, uh, who came to Phoenix to play um, at you know Blockbuster or something. And uh, I went and had dinner with him the night before. Right. And I, you know, I said to him, so Tom, when you come back to LA, could you like help me write a song? And he really said to me, why are you asking me to write a song for you? You know, this is what you do. You, you gave up husbands and babies and that life so you could write your songs. And now you're telling me I have to help you write a song? I don't think that's true, Stevie. So you need to get in your car, go home, and start writing some songs. And I guess when somebody that you love and that you trust and that you respect says something like that to you, it's pretty, it snaps you. Right. And he, it snapped me. Because everybody else in the world could say, get over it. Yeah. Let's get going here. You have an album to do. But when Tom said it, it was almost like, oh, right, okay. Do you know no. what was the one that you wrote right after that? What was the one that sort of broke the The next neck? song that came was Trouble in Shangri-La. Oh, it was? Yeah. How about that? Yeah. So Love Is was written about three months before I saw Tom that night. Right. And then Trouble in Shangri-La was written a couple of months later. Is it true that you once vowed to never sing in public? Oh, at 170 pounds, I said I am never coming on stage again at really? 170 pounds yes just so you know Stevie 170 is my goal weight oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes but I'm a rosy I'm only 5'1 all right okay all right I'm a weight watcher that's what I put down as my old book I'm only 5'1 well, so that's 170 true. on a 5'1 you know one and it really is, a it's not about the number it's really about how you feel it's, so yes. you you felt like you couldn't you it's couldn't about, face like it. my little wrists were gone you know and I was like horrified yeah and 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 you got yourself together what 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 was the impetus? Um, it's taken a long time. Yes. It really has. Yes. I mean, I really started in 1995, and it's been it's been slow. Right. And in the last um, in the last year, I've really kind of gotten back to where I, I can never go back to 105 pounds. I know that. So it's no, like but I'm, you look amazing. I have I'm, to tell you, you really.
figure that's okay. You know, so I'm fine now. And now, now my the most important thing is I just want to stay healthy. I want to exercise, not to be thin. I want to exercise so that I never am sick. Right. You know, our good friend Liz told me about your health regime, that you're on libidazone. Oh. <laughs> I was at the party on the boat. <laughs> of course, we need his own. <laughs> Do you guys know what that is they from General know. Hospital? Forget it. It's an inside joke. <laughs> He'll get it later, and boy, will you laugh. Uh, can you stay when we take a break and Absolutely. come back? Because you know I have about four hours worth of questions for okay. you. Because okay. I adore you in a sick kind of sycophant, psycho stalker way. Okay. All right, then. See me next. We'll be back in a minute.